is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Kempel with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. I've got a super cool guest. I'm very, very excited to get into what he's going to share with us today. He is an optimal health strategist, both physical and mental, which is very important. He is out of Anthem, Arizona. He loves to ski, kite surf, hike, bike, read, and experience the life he loves in, in Arizona. Please yeah. welcome... Gunther Mueller. Gunther, can you please introduce yourself and tell the audience a little bit about your background? So I have a very diverse background. I grew up in New York City in Queens and went to Colorado for about 25 years and now I'm in beautiful Anthem, Arizona. I've been uh, transformed myself maybe six or seven times in my life. So I've been in the food distribution industry. I've owned restaurants. I've been in the solar business. And then for the last 10 years in the, in the health field, uh, training physicians on how to optimize hormones and nutrition. And my latest passion is really to teach people on how to become a super conscious creator so that they can live the life that they love. So this is from decades of searching things in the quantum physical space, understanding personal development, human achievement. I'm a trainer for Tony Robbins every once in a while in some of his companies. So I, I work with some people and I, I follow people like Greg Braden and Joe Dispenza and Bruce Lipton, if you're interested in any of those authors. But the work that I'm going to share with you today is really based on the shoulders of giants. Awesome. I'm very excited to, to get into this conversation because you were sharing some very interesting things with me before we started recording. So I don't even know where to start because <laughs> we, <laughs> so I'm just going to let you just dive right into it because you, you were talking about quantum physics. You were talking about how we recode, you know, and how we've been programmed at a young age and all that good stuff, which I totally get. And we are in alignment on um, how we view those type of things. So right. I, I'm going to let you, you know, maybe oh. kick it off. Where, where I, can set a, I can set a context for yeah. you, right? Yeah. So let's start with the context of living label free, right? Let's do that's, it. <laughs> that's good, right? So what does that mean? So for me, when I, when I came across your podcast and I saw label free, the first word that comes up for me is our identity. Yeah. So the, 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 the biggest label that we have to worry about is how we actually label ourselves in our own mind, in our own subconscious programming, we do have labels. Yeah. And yeah. those labels do affect our current reality or call it the active experience in life. And I'd like to set the tone for everybody that what we're living is basically a holographic movie. And Matt, you've been in movies before, right? And you're looking at the screen. Yep. Imagine stepping into the screen where you become that character, the main character. Yeah. And that you're the producer, you're the director, you wrote the script, you handed everybody their part, and we're in this holographic movie where everything around you is basically there for you. It's not happening to you, it's happening for you. And it's happening because your identity, whatever label, and let me just give you this, this, the six most sabotaging labels that we have that are running, that we created when we were little kids, maybe zero to seven years old, and we created these identities. And it's like, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not capable. I'm insignificant. I'm not perfect. Or a powerful one is I don't belong. Yeah. And there's myriad of variations from those labels or from those identities. And sometimes we're not even conscious that they're running. But when we do a little investigative work, we see that, oh, there might be a pattern in life. And I'm here to tell your audience that there's only three places to be. You're either stuck, yeah. meaning nothing's moving, nothing's changing, Groundhog Day, right? Same in, same out every day. Oscillating is another place. That's where I found myself before I learned how to do this work is where it kind of feels like three steps forward, two steps back. You're going three steps forward, two steps back, one step forward, one step back. And you kind of, you have these dreams, you have these desires, you know what you want. And you kind of get your hands right around them and it just kind of slips out. You taste it, you feel it, it's there for a while. And then you, boom, you snap back to the way it was before. Yeah. That's yeah. truly because your identity has to die in order for you to get what you want. So that label, that identity, that I am statement yeah. is powerful and it's running. But the third place where we want to be is in a flow state. So you've heard great athletes talk about being in flow, you know, guys like Michael Jordan and LeBron James and these guys, when they're playing their game and they're making these crazy shots, they're in a flow state. They're in that yeah. zone, right? So we want to get to the zone. And what's the zone? It's being able to turn thoughts into things. It's being able to turn our desires into an active experience in our reality. Yeah. 
And the way we do that is we recode the identity. See, we're, we're all truly super conscious beings already, mm -hmm. but we've forgotten. Yeah. So yeah. It, uh, to make quantum physics really easy, that everything exists in a field of infinite possibilities. And what we're doing through our identities, we're collapsing one possibility into our active experience. Right. Out of the infinite field, we are creating one possibility. And so that possibility has to be congruent with the label or with the identity. Yeah. And all we need to do to have a different experience is to shift the identity, to just move it, slowly move it. And we do that through what we call a recode process. It takes about 15 minutes. And we're asking the super conscious side of yourself to remove any resistance okay. to having what you want, to having what you desire. So when you become super conscious, you simply just learn to recode the resistance that's in the way of taking obvious action to turn your thoughts into things. And that's how life becomes easy. Yeah. Oh, man, man that is super cool. Oh, my gosh. I, I want you to recode me right now. <laughs> Only 15 minutes. Hey, we got time. <laughs> oh, we, we, could do, we could do a session one time for your audience where we could do a, a recode on Zoom or something like that. Be okay. totally open to giving your audience the recode experience. That is that's awesome. So only 15 minutes. I mean, so what I, not without getting too much into detail, what does that look like taking someone through that? So it just looks like there's nothing you can do to screw it up. Uh, as a magnetic mind coach, what I do is I, I speak to your super conscious on your behalf. I refer to you as super conscious because that's who you truly are. And in the beginning, we focus on what, I, what we call the core four. So it's making a true choice. So there's five steps in the magnetic mind method. Number one is you got to choose a true goal and a true desire. And some of you may say, well, that's easy to do. It's really not. And I'll give you an example. Yeah. Many people would love to have the experience of abundance. Right. or affluence, or infinite cash flow, or just financial freedom, right? That's on top of mind of a lot of people. Yeah. And some people may come to the conclusion that they need to have a successful business in order to achieve financial abundance. And as a coach, I would say to them, that's not really true. Because if your true choice is a stepping stone unto something else, it's not really a true choice. So the true choice would really be the experience of abundance. Right. And I want everybody, I want everybody to think about for a second, you know, what's, what's the experience of abundance? I want you to think about breathing. Have you ever thought of a lack of air? Yeah. We don't, right? We just take air and our breath and our breathing. That is an experience of abundance. Right. There is an infinite supply of air. It's not scarce. It's not limited. And we can breathe as much of it as we want however we feel like breathing it, yeah. right? So some core four choices would be a true choice that we like to work on in the beginning is something like, I choose to live my true nature and purpose. It encompasses a lot of things, and but that experience or that end result is a true choice. I choose to live my true nature and purpose. Another one might be because we may be in a victim stance, we may be in a problem solving stance instead of being in the creator stance, I choose to be the predominant creative force in my life. Yes. I choose, right? I choose to be the predominant creative force in my life. Or simply, I just choose to live the life I love. I choose to live the life I love. And we do a recode to remove any resistance that keeps me from that true choice. Another one, health is a big deal in our world. So I choose to be healthy and vital. Yes. And what you'll see in those choices is that we're not trying to fix a problem. Right, right. And that's the biggest thing you understand. Chris Duncan, who's my mentor in this, just came out with a great book it's called You're Not Broken. It just got released. And it's because you are not broken. There's nothing we need to fix. And most of the things happening in the personal development movement, we need to go in there and dig up all the old stuff and figure out what my mom did to me or my dad did to me or I had this experience or maybe it's serious stuff like abuse and, you know, on that level, not minimizing any of that but we don't need to go back and fix it. Right. What we need to do is let it go. Yes. Totally and, that's, and that's what the recode does. The recode asks that highest version of yourself called superconscious, which knows everything that's ever happened to you, every decision, every thought, every experience, everything, it, it knows it. Yeah. 
And we asked Superconscious to just do a recode in the perfect order, in the perfect way that allows the identity to shift. And as the identity shifts, as the label gets removed, right? As the label mm -hmm. peels off, the current reality or the active experience changes. Yes. And you don't need to know how that happens. We just need to know what we want. So that's like, that's step one, true choice, true goal. Then we create a structural tension between the way, it, the way we want it, the way we desire it, our true choice, and the way it is now. Right. Because Good. the mind takes the path of least resistance and it needs to resolve the tension. And then to add a little lighter fluid onto the deal, we need to get into the emotion of the end result. We need to know, we need to get into that space of what does it feel like to have this true choice? Yeah. What does it feel like? Like really get into it and see it. And this is what Olympic athletes do, right? They see themselves breaking the world record. If we look back at Roger Bannister, who's the first guy to run the, the mile in less than four minutes, before that, it was impossible. Right. It's impossible yeah. for a human to run the four minute mile. As soon as he did it, eight other people did it right behind him. Because they knew it was possible. Because right? they realized it was possible. If he yeah. could do it, I could do it. Right. See, and possibility is one of those things that what my true choice, my true desire, yes, it's in the field of, of, of possibilities, but my identity or my label might say, well, it's not possible for me. Right. And that's, the, that's where the block is. That's where the resistance is, right? The blockage of resistance that keeps you from that true choice keeps you. So that's step number four. Then we do the recode by asking superconscious, okay, you see the true desire. You see the way it is now. You see the resistance that's in the way? Okay, recode that. Just melt it away. Just let it go. And your conscious does that. And then the fifth step is to take the next obvious action. The main thing that the secret and the law of attraction, you know, you're not going to manifest stuff by just sitting on your couch. Right. <laughs> that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen, right? So a lot of people, you know, they, they checked into that. They read the book. They, oh, that doesn't work for me. It's not working for me. Well, they, they left out an important piece, which is you need to take the next obvious action step. You need to be in flow. You need to be moving in a direction. So when you have a true choice and you're removing the labels that hold you cemented into the current reality, then your spirit kind of tells you, well, to be in alignment with that true choice, here's what you ought to be doing. Let's just take a simple thing. Let's say we're choosing health and vitality. Right. The next obvious action might be to hydrate properly every day. Yeah. I mean, drink enough water. That's a good, obvious action step to becoming healthier and more vital. Yes. The next obvious action step might be to go see a doctor that can help you. Maybe you haven't seen a doctor in five years, but the next obvious action step is to do something that moves you in the direction of that true choice and that true goal. And your super conscious self will tell you what that next step is. Yeah. You'll feel it you'll know it. And so becoming super conscious is really about connecting with that highest and truest version of yourself and living in that creative stance instead of the problem solving stance. You're not broken. There's nothing you have to fix. Success is not personal. It's completely structural. And you don't have to fix yourself to get what you want. That's the message of what I'm here to share. So melting away the labels, focusing on what we want and then doing some recodes to clear out the blocks and the resistance. I think what you are talking about, what you're doing is fascinating. And I love, I love your approach. So a person could probably do several different recodes and depending on what their, their ultimate desire is in different areas of their life. Right. So the big, the big areas are, let's say uh, wealth, you know, finances is a big area health is a big area and then love and relationships is a big area right yeah and a lot of people let's say in the love and relationships are thinking well i need to become this or i need to lose 20 pounds before i find my dream mate or anything like that right there's all these criteria there's all these well when i do this then i'll get that yeah it's just not true we yeah. just need to focus on what you want and then the universe basically figures out how but instead of focusing, but instead of focusing on what we don't want, which is most of us have been trained to do that, we focus on what we don't want. I don't want to go bankrupt. Right. I don't want to be alone. 
I don't want to be sick, right? And they put the energy into that. And so the congruence of the label or the identity is that I need to have an experience of being sick. Yeah. I need to have an experience of being alone. I need to have an experience of being broke. Because it's like, it's like a negative connotation when you say the I don't part instead of like what I'm going to get. So for me, I, you know, I've pretty much all my pillars are good. Like I've worked on a lot of those blocks. My, my little, little dog wants to come and say hi. So this is say hi, Athena. Um, <laughs> um, but so my, I think where I have the main block, um, like my relationships are great. I've come to a lot of, you know, greatness there i do believe in abundance i do i believe that i live i i tell myself i'm living abundantly i have abundance of everything that i possibly want and as i continue to tell myself that day in and day out because you know i actually was working a corporate job i lost it in december i've been a serial entrepreneur after my husband passed i had to get back into the corporate world and it's kind of been a blessing in disguise, although, you know, I do get a little nervous. Okay, what's going to what's gonna be next for me? How am I going to make a living? You know, like, I got I to gotta be able to pay my bills somehow. But right. as I continue to tell myself that I live in abundance, like things just keep happening for me to take me to the next level of opportunities, you know, with my podcast. And because um, I'm absolutely love doing this. I'm just, I'm being 100% authentic and doing what I what I want to do right now, living my best life. Like I have zero complaints. I'm not even worried about what's going to happen because I truly believe the universe is going to create what I need to survive. Hey guys, Deanna here. I'm taking a quick break to share an exciting opportunity with you. I have recently partnered with Scotsman. They have created a crowdfunding campaign building 3D printed electric scooters that make transportation smart, elegant, and sustainable. It runs on energy efficient batteries that double as USB-C power banks. And they're swappable too. So you can replace your battery and keep your scooter. Check out their crowdfunding page down below Hurry and sign up now to take advantage of their early bird prices, 50% off. It has a built-in camera, GPS, live maps, and an automatic lock. So hurry up now, get in on this, go to my special link below, 50% off, and be a part of this really cool campaign. You won't be disappointed. It will create the circumstances in which you get to do what you love to do. Yes. But when you when you think about in your past, how many times have you did you really sit down and say to yourself, what is it that I would just truly love to do? What it what and and go do that, right? So your audience is listening right now. I want I want the audience to think about how many times have you actually made a choice based on just what you would love to do? Oh, I take I do it all the time personally. Like <laughs> and sometimes those sometimes those choices don't exactly, you know equal out to what you wanted to, you know, so I, I wanted to become a fashion designer. I got into fashion. I invested a ton of money. It did not work out. I designed three great collections. I decided after that, since it wasn't, you know, I just wasn't making it happen from a, from a fiduciary, from a financial standpoint, I'm like, I'm done. And that's when I found podcasting. I'm like, all right, I'm going to try this. And I, it has been so like natural and there's nothing's been forced and it has just been flowing very and I, I feel like I found where I'm supposed to be. Right. So you're going with what you love. You don't have all the finances figured out around launching a podcast and all that or where the necessary income is going to come from and all that. You're just allowing it to manifest. Yes. Right. So that is manifestation. That's how we become creators, by choosing what we love, getting into the emotion of the end result. Just like an Olympic athlete would get into the emotion of breaking the world record, let's say in swimming, right? Yeah. Uh, Michael Phelps, right? Eight gold medals or whatever he's got. Um, how many times has he visualized himself breaking the world record? How many times? Have he, at least half. I mean, the Olympic trainers know that the mental, because your imagination does not know the difference is that it's not real. Right, right. When you're imagining and you're using that power of your imagination and you're seeing yourself in the end result and you you're experiencing the emotion of the end result, the mind does not know it's not real. Right. Yeah. That's truly because in the quantum physical world, nothing really is real. It's all an illusion. Right. So when we use our imagination to create that illusion, the subconscious field, the whole field says, 
oh, I guess that's what the main personality, you, me, that, that's what it wants. So I'm just going to create that. I'm going to give it what it wants. This, the, the universe says yes, is basically what it says. Yes. But most of us send it mixed messages all the time. So it's a little confused. It doesn't know exactly what to give you because one minute you're this way, the next minute you're that way. So it's learning how to focus. And the whole purpose of what we do here is to have an experience of less pain and more satisfaction. Right. As human, as human beings, we're pushing away from pain. We're trying to not experience pain and we want to experience pleasure. Right. So when we do and a immediate recode, pleasure at that, immediate pleasure. <laughs> we, we want immediate pleasure at that, not just pleasure. We want it now. Right, right. And, and that's a great point because, you know, we need to understand that if, if anybody remembers a record player, right, you put the, the needle on the record and it's playing a groove. So we've created our labels or our identity or our groove over, let's say, 30, 40, 50 years of life. Yeah. Right? yeah. That, that groove has been playing for a long time. Yeah. And so we need to, like, pick up the needle and play a different song. And it's when we play a different song, we see a different holographic movie. Oh different God. characters come in. They say different things. They relate differently to you. Opportunities show up. It's just because the identity or the label has been removed or melted away. We shift. And all of a sudden now the script has been rewritten. Yeah. I actually have a, a question for you. How, what role does fear play into people that are that are stuck in that groove and and that you know that would prevent them from recoding their reality so nothing will prevent them from recoding the reality because super conscious is not attached to the fear okay 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 so fear it understands that the main personality is having an experience of fear and again, in the early part of life, we made those label decisions to keep us safe. Right. The whole purpose of the ego, the conscious mind, is to keep us safe. So it senses danger. And it usually, the decision has been made because we tried that, we did that, it didn't work out, that was painful, so I'm not going to do that again. And that becomes written in the code. Right. And so the fear is just the egoic mind keeping us safe or insulated from another painful experience. Yeah. When we go to super conscious and we say, look, my true choice, let's say, is to have the relationship of my dreams. But I've had 56 relationships already that have caused me pain. So maybe I don't date anymore or I'm not going there anymore because it's never worked out. Like it just it just causes pain all the time. And so fear, let's call it just fearful of getting intimate or fearful of getting in a relationship or fearful of anything like that. When you recode that fear, that experience, the previous load melts away. The identity gets to shift. And then we get to choose what it is we really want. Because yeah. we're not yeah. trying to solve a problem, which is staying out of pain. How do I stay out of pain? It's more of what do I want? Yeah. What is it that I want? And one, one key point I want to share with everyone here is that a lot of times we're in the position where we think, the desired reality or what we want is going to make life better. Right, right, right. And I want to suggest that it doesn't make life better. It just makes life different. It makes the experience different. And why we want to do that is because if we say the future is going to be better than the present, we actually get anchored in the present because we're not content with what is now. We need to look at the current reality that what we're experiencing with all the positives and all the negatives and take a stance that is, it's just what is. Right. It's just what is now. And it's what I have created to this point. Right. And now from a creator stance, I'm going to choose a different experience. Not that this one was bad. Not that this one didn't serve me. It played a purpose. It played a role. All my experiences have gotten me to where I am now. And now is just what is. Yeah. Because I am the predominant, predominant creative force in my life. I get to choose what I want. I'm going to focus on what I want. And what I want is going to come in from the infinite field of possibilities. You're going to collapse from that field, a new possibility that you get to experience. I love it. I love different it. people, different episodes, different situations, whatever it is that you desire. Yeah. Oh, man. Love it. 
my god i think we could talk i could talk to you for, for hours i'm gonna pick one question off of here even though i think we've covered so much um no actually can you talk about what being um the talk about the magnetic mind method Is, so i know you've gone over quite a little bit that's something i've never heard of before so it's actually relatively new. Uh, so uh, Chris Duncan, who's the creator of the Magnetic Mind Method, he's my mentor. He's who trained me on how to do this method. Um, really went through some life-altering experiences. He lost his best friend uh, due to a motorcycle accident. He was running a multi-million-dollar company, and basically his life created on the it cratered on the loss of his friend. And he was angry at the world and just couldn't couldn't get out of that funk until he met a lady named Colette. And he, again, he stands on the shoulders of many, you know, Joe Dispenza, Bruce Lipton, Greg Braden, Colette, uh, Lynn Taggart, who wrote the book, The Field. So what I'm sharing with you here is, is not my opinion. Right. This is, this is truly science, science, that the experiments have been done. Okay. So the quantum physicists know that a particle doesn't exist. You've all heard of quarks and quantum physical, you know, particles that are yeah. smaller than the atom. The truth I watched, is, I watched the Big Bang Theory. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the, the truth is these particles don't even exist until an observer has an intention to observe them. Right. So when the scientist or the observer has the intention to measure them or observe them, that's when they appear. Well, that's creation. When you have the intention, you have the desire mixed with some emotion to create a true choice or a true desire, the universe has no choice but to manifest that in three-dimensional time and space. Wow. Right? Yeah. And so you asked about the magnetic mind method. That really is the first step. So it's five steps. First step is true choice, true desire. And I always like to share with people, what if your desires are God's plan for your life? A lot of people that I meet are like, you know, I just don't know what my, my, my purpose is. I don't know what I'm here to do. I don't know why I'm here. I'm trying, I've been trying to figure that out. And, you know, different people, different things come up when you use the word God or, you know, higher self or wh whatever word you want to use. But just think, because a lot of us, you know, in our culture use the word God or have a concept of God, whatever it is. Think of God as that infinite field, mm -hmm. that just field of possibility and creation. What if the desires that we get are that push into our purpose? Right, right, yes. But because of our label, because of our identity, the conscious mind may come up and say, well, yeah, that might be your desire, but that's not for you. Or that's not going to work out for you because you know you're stupid. You don't know enough. You're, you don't have this. You know you don't belong to the right crowd. Who do you think you are thinking that you can actually do that? Yeah, that's okay for everybody else, but it's not, it's not okay for you. Right. You won't be successful, right? So you're not good enough to do that. How many of us know that little voice that comes up? Now, the voice is trying to keep you safe, and it's trying to keep you away from pain. So it's not like you want to kill the voice, because it's done a good job up to now in keeping you alive. No, no, no. No. Sorry. It's all about a new choice. Yeah. So that's yeah. step one. And then what's important is creating the structural tension. What do I want? What's it like now? Not in a judgmental way saying this is better than what I have now. It's just different. Right. Just different. And create the structural tension. Here's where I am now. This is where I want to go. Here where I am now. Here's where I want to go. What does it feel like going where I want to go? So that's the third step, getting into the emotion of the end result. Because in, a, in the quantum physical field, Einstein figured this out. There's only energy and information. And it's that when those two meet, it collapses into this holographic movie that we're experiencing. So the energy is the emotion. Yeah. The information is the true choice. Right. So I'm choosing something and I'm putting, I'm getting into the emotion of the end result. And then we go to super conscious. And this is where you do need a coach in the beginning to learn how to do it yourself. And like you said, you can do many recodes. You know, you can do one, two, three recodes a week. And we've got a great group program where you can plug in at a convenient time and, you know, recode health, recode love, recode finance, recode whatever it is you want is a true choice. And look, everybody that's been successful in life has had a coach. Would you agree with that? 
Yes. I mean, you know, Tiger Woods, he doesn't play golf. He's had multiple coaches teaching him how to play golf. You know, Michael Jordan had coaches. LeBron James got good. So having a coach and teaching you how to do this, how to become super conscious or realizing that you already are super conscious and just having the five steps down and repeating, it gets to a point where it's like rinse and repeat. Right, right. Rinse and repeat. And then you do the recode, we remove the resistance, melt away the resistance. And here's the one thing, super conscious will only do, let's say in one session, what it can safely do. Right, right. It, you know, you can't go from zero to hero, let's say in one session. So if financial abundance is what's being recoded or, you know, optimal health and vitality is what's being recoded, it may take some recode sessions to remove the resistance because you remove some resistance and then something else comes up. Right. You recode right. that. You move a little bit further, some other resistance comes up, you recode that. But never do we have to go back and actually fix something that's broken. We don't have to relive the past. We don't have to go through all the emotion and all that kind of stuff. And no, we only focus on what we want and we recode the resistance. And then the fifth step is to take the next obvious action. I love it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's just what, I, I, I can obvious. keep talking to you forever, but it, it'll just make the episode way too long. So we're going to have to do it like a part two. Maybe we can do the recode thing with you and, and yeah, that be like a part of the, the next, next episode. Um, you are just absolutely fascinating. I'm so I'm so thankful for you to be on my show and share all this and dropping all this knowledge. You know, some people might be like, you know, but like someone like myself, I absorbed all of that and I'm just like, wow, because it's a completely different level of consciousness if you allow yourself to understand it, right? right. So, right. Um, at first, everything is foreign, right? So I like to tell people, it's okay, that might be like this. <laughs> but what you heard, maybe listen to the episode again, let it sink in a little bit deeper, uh, just kind of ruminate on it or contemplate it or bake, let it, let it bake in just a little bit, you know, don't put up that wall right away and say, oh, I don't understand it, therefore, oh, it's too much, right. yeah. just yeah. let it, let it sink in a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So where can people find you? Can you please like drop all your links? So, yeah, so the, the, the most general place that people can find me is dreamlifemasters.com. So we're trying to create the life that we love, the dream life that we love, dream life masters with an S dot com. You can get some free stuff on there. So, you know, go to that. You can get a morning ritual thing. You can uh, join me in one of my uh, training webinars where you can have a live experience of it. And um, then also you can get a recode session for yourself. And I do the first recode session. They're usually $397 for a recode session. If you go to uh, questforthequan.com, and we talked about it earlier, it comes from Jerry Maguire's movie, uh, where Cuba Gooding Jr. was, uh, Jerry, I, I'm looking for the Quan. Well, when you become super conscious, that is the Quan. okay? Yeah. That is the thing. So you can go to questforthequan.com, and you can get a very special offer, 109 bucks. You can get a 90-minute um, session with me. And I will do your first um, experiential recode. Awesome. And I'll put all those links in the description of the episode. Um, Gunther, any last words of advice or wisdom you'd like to leave with the audience before we say goodbye? You know, I've spent multiple six figures in the personal development space trying to fix my problem over 30 years. Okay. I can tell you unequivocally that this is the last thing you need to learn. The last last book you need to read, last course, last thing you need to learn is how to become super conscious and create, turn thoughts into things so you can live the life that you love. You learn this, you be able, you know, the, it's like the genie in the lamp. Yeah. You know, you rub on the lamp, you learn how to do this and there's nothing that you can't create. Boom. We're going to end it on that note. Thank you again so much for being a guest. You are absolutely fascinating and I can't wait to have you back. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Kempel with Label Free Podcast. Live your best life. You must live label free. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, follow, all that good stuff. And I'll be back soon with more dynamic guests.